I'm Matthias Pearl, the Restoration Program Manager with the Upper Deschutes Watershed Council. I have been overseeing all the restoration work on Rimrock Ranch over the last five plus years. Rimrock Ranch is a property owned by the Deschutes Land Trust and it represents the last two miles of a contiguous six mile area along Wychus Creek that the Land Trust has been able to protect and preserve. That's really important because Wychus Creek is really an oasis for fish and wildlife. This phase of restoration at Rimrock Ranch is a culmination of multiple years of work we started back in 2016 on the first phase, a mile of restoration upstream. The second phase, we did another half mile in 2021, and this last mile and a half was completed in 2023. The work this year in 2023 involved essentially resetting the valley and restoring processes. That's involved essentially lowering high terrace areas, uh, grading those down using heavy equipment, and then using that material to fill the old channel alignment to essentially equalize elevations across the valley floor. We ended up spreading and using large woody material whole trees with root wads, juniper trees, out onto those cut surfaces. This style of restoration is different, I think, than what maybe a lot of people think of when they think of river restoration. It's different in the sense that when we pull the equipment out and we consider the, the heavy equipment phase of the work to be completed, this is not a manicured, clean restoration site. If anything, it looks the opposite. It looks very chaotic. The messiness is, is very intentional and a lot of thought actually goes into doing that. But what we're trying for is a, a very process-oriented restoration. Processes that allow the, the river scape to evolve on its own uh, over time. To take the ingredients, so to speak, sediment, water, trees, vegetation that grows, and assemble those ingredients into a river scape that is self-sustaining over time. Research has shown that these chaotic, messy systems, with a lot of these processes fully functional, are, are the most productive for aquatic species and wildlife in general. The work was, was really challenging, but we were really lucky to work with BCI Contracting. We're there with all their heavy equipment, all the, the different equipment needed to complete this style of work and they really came prepared. They had a ton of experience working with this style of restoration and really provided amazing tools and ideas on how to accomplish this work while having the smallest possible footprint on the ground. Building on that, we worked really closely with our engineering consultant in Wolfwater Resources to develop a really comprehensive design that was then handed off to our contractor. There's a certain amount of planning you can do, but in the end, there's just so much on the ground that pops up that you need to, to think quickly and thoroughly through how to adapt the design to the landscape that you're looking in. This work is, is very different and really challenging, but also really rewarding. Despite being in a construction zone with a lot of equipment every day, every morning when we'd come in, the tracks of large cats <laughs> that we would see, we even saw bear tracks one day, were always pretty exciting to see, knowing that the wildlife is still there and still pretty active despite uh, our footprint during the work, and knowing that obviously they'll be there long after we're gone. It's challenging as we reactivate the valley and put water into more areas. It tends to be pretty messy and difficult to walk around. I always joke that if it's difficult for a human to navigate, it's probably really good for wildlife. <laughs> so it, it was really exciting to, to be in that environment, climbing over wood that we were putting into the landscape, and just also being really cognizant of, of being visitors. I feel really lucky to be part of a project through not only to when equipment pulls out, but then to seeing the site evolve without our involvement. Very early on, humans are very much involved in planning and developing designs and permitting and grant funding and so on. And that is challenging and, and rewarding in and of itself. But I think the true reward for me is having that as a foundation to then stepping back 
and taking the hands off and letting nature take hold, that's, that's fulfilling. To then see just time and evolution of that landscape without our hands in it and to see how productive it can be without us is, is really, I think, why, why I come back to, to try to do these projects.